Hi, this is John Ainsley, CTO at Doulos. Easier UVM, scoreboards. This video is a tutorial on using reference models and scoreboards in UVM. During this video, I'm going to be taking advantage of the Easier UVM coding guidelines and code generator from Doulos. If you're not already familiar with Easier UVM, you can find all of the details from the URL shown here. Let's start with a look at reference models and scoreboards. The term scoreboard can be used in various ways, the main distinction being whether the scoreboard includes a reference model or doesn't include a reference model. In our case, we have a reference model that's separate from the scoreboard. So the reference model is connected to the inputs to the design under test, and the reference model uses those inputs to calculate the expected response of the design under test, which it then sends to the scoreboard. The actual response from the design under test is also sent to the scoreboard, and the scoreboard then compares pairs of transactions, one expected transaction and one actual transaction. And all being well, there should be one actual transaction corresponding to each expected transaction, otherwise the scoreboard is going to give some kind of error. The alternative way to architect things is to have the reference model as part of the scoreboard, but the disadvantage of doing that is that it then makes the scoreboard dependent on the design under test. Using the architecture shown here, the scoreboard can be generic and reusable, and only the reference model depends on the details of the actual design under test. Let's look at how the reference model and the scoreboard might work by considering what happens when our input agents generate stimulus. So here an agent is generating stimulus for the design under test, and the monitor within the agent is sending an analysis transaction out to the UVM verification environment, and that analysis transaction is sent to the reference model. All of the components above the level of the agent in the UVM environment are untimed, so the reference model can immediately calculate the expected output from the design under test and send the corresponding transaction through to the scoreboard. In this particular example, the design under test is just a 4x4 crossbar switch, so you can see the reference model has four inputs and four outputs. Each time a transaction arrives on one of the inputs of the reference model, the transaction is decoded, and depending on its address, it's sent through the appropriate output to the scoreboard. But in general, the reference model can have any number of inputs and outputs of any transaction types at all. Let's suppose that another agent now generates further stimulus. So an agent wiggles pins on the design under test, sends the corresponding transaction up to the reference model for analysis. The reference model figures out what the DUT should do and then sends the transaction out through the appropriate output port. And in this case, we've got two transactions queued up in the scoreboard. Remembering that the reference model and the scoreboard are untimed, whereas the simulation model of the design under test will consume time, there may be several transactions generated by the agents and sent through the reference model to the scoreboard before we see any actual responses from the design under test. But eventually, at some time, the design under test will start responding and the first of the transactions will emerge from the design under test and be sent up to the scoreboard. And at this point, the scoreboard can start comparing pairs of transactions. So here the scoreboard is comparing the actual transaction from the design under test, making sure that it matches the expected response from the reference model. And the same for the next transaction, and the same for the final transaction. So you can see that the scoreboard is needing to queue up input transactions and then compare pairs of transactions, one expected transaction and one actual transaction, at the appropriate points in time. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to be making use of the Easier UVM Code Generator. And the Easier UVM Code Generator generates and instantiates the code you can see here, including a template for the reference model and a scoreboard. The scoreboard that we've chosen to generate from the Easier UVM Code Generator is actually an instance of the Sciasil UVM scoreboard. Sciasil are a company who provide an open source scoreboard, so rather than reinvent the wheel, we've chosen to make use of their scoreboard within the Easier UVM Code Generator. I should just point out that there's no commercial relationship between Sciasil and Doulos. We've simply chosen to use the Sciasil scoreboard rather than invent our own.
This scoreboard is available with an open source license and you can get all of the details from the SciSL website at the URL shown here. This tutorial isn't specifically a tutorial on how to use the SciSL scoreboard, but nonetheless I will be showing you an example of a simple usage of the scoreboard as we use from the Easy UVM Code Generator. The scoreboard can contain any number of cues, and in fact this scoreboard is configurable as to the number and types of cues it contains. As we generate the scoreboard from the Easier UVM code generator, we're going to configure the scoreboard to have two types of queue named ref and dot. So the ref queues contain the expected responses from the reference model, the dot queues contain the actual responses from the design under test. And these queues are organised into pairs, where each pair of queues, one reference queue and one dot queue, is associated with a particular producer. So the SciSL scoreboard supports the concept of queues. You can have any number of queues of any types. And also the concept of producers. So each producer, in effect in this case, represents one output from the design under test, and it can be associated with one or more reference models, one reference model in the case of the Easy UVM code generator. The SciSL scoreboard is then configured by means of a UVM configuration object, and that configuration object contains the specification of the queues and the producers required by this particular instance of the scoreboard. The scoreboard itself is completely generic and be, can be parameterized in a, in a whole number of different ways. The easier UVM code generator doesn't actually modify the code of the scoreboard, it just uses it out of the box and then configures it by making use of the UVM factory and the configuration object. I'll show you the code for doing that later on. There's one further twist in instantiating the SciSL scoreboard, and that concerns the data types of the input queues. In the release of the scoreboard that was current at the time of making this tutorial, all of the input queues receive transaction objects of type UVM sequence item. However, the agents that are generating the actual responses are generating protocol-specific transactions. So what we do in the code generator is to instantiate some conversion boxes in order to convert between the protocol specific types of the transactions generated by the agents and the UVM sequence item transaction type required by the scoreboard. I'll show you the code for doing that later on. It's not a big deal, it's just a, a quirk of the way that we instantiate the scoreboard at the moment. So now let's take a look at the reference model. In general, reference models are large and complicated. Writing reference models isn't easy. Writing reference models might be one of the most difficult parts of creating the UVM verification environment. The easier UVM code generator gives us some help in that it generates a template from the class and we then just have to fill in the details. So what I'm showing you here is code that was automatically generated from the easier UVM code generator according to the number of inputs and outputs that we specified for our reference model. So in this case, we've got four incoming transaction streams and four outgoing transaction streams on our reference model because the reference model is for a 4x4 crossbar switch. So in UVM, we've made use of the UVM analysis imp declaration macro in order to support multiple incoming analysis transaction streams. So we have four analysis exports for the incoming transaction streams, and the types of those analysis exports were types that were generated from the macros. And we have four analysis ports for the outgoing transaction streams that are generating transactions of type UVM sequence item that are sent directly to the scoreboard. The generated code also includes declarations of the four write methods that are going to be used to process the incoming transaction streams. And then all of the heavy lifting of the reference model is being done by some user-defined code that's been included as a user-defined code fragment shown here in blue. So the easier UVM code generator is generating for us all the boilerplate code shown in black, and then we're including a user-defined code fragment. Here's the actual implementation of one of the write methods and the send method. So you can see that each of the write methods that are receiving incoming transactions through the analysis exports are simply forwarding those transactions to a single send method that's calculating the expected outputs of the design under test. So the send method first of all creates an outgoing transaction, 
It then copies the address and data attributes from the incoming transaction to the outgoing transaction. It decodes the address and then sends the transaction out through the appropriate analysis port in order to model the behavior of the crossbar switch. So that's it for the reference model. Now let's take a quick look at the type conversion box. So the type for conversion box is just a hack to convert from a protocol specific transaction type to the transaction type UVM sequence item as required by the generic scoreboard component. So the type conversion box itself is simply a UVM subscriber that takes a transaction type that's going to be specific to our DUT protocol. It then implements the write method for the incoming transaction and does an implicit upcast to convert that transaction to type UVM sequence item, which is the type of the outgoing analysis port. So that's a very, very straightforward UVM subscriber component to convert a transaction of one type to a transaction of another type. Then we have to connect everything together at the top level. So in our top level UVM env, we have instances of the agents connected to the DUT inputs and the DUT outputs. We have an instance of the SIRCEL scoreboard component, an instance of a reference model, and a conversion box for each of our DUT output agents. The easier UVM code generator allows you to instantiate multiple scoreboards and multiple reference models, but the reference models and scoreboards always come in pairs, so there's always exactly one scoreboard associated with each reference model. I'm not going to show you the full source code of the top-level ENV. That's simply mechanically instantiating each of the components and connecting the analysis ports to the corresponding analysis exports. But I will show you how to do the factory overrides and the configuration for the scoreboard component. It looks like this. So in the build phase of our top-level ENV, we're doing two factory overrides. For the first factory override is setting the queue type that we want to use within the scoreboard. The SciCell scoreboard is highly configurable. We can configure almost anything about the behaviour of the scoreboard. One of the things that you can configure is the exact behaviour of the scoreboard input queues. Well, in this case, we don't need to do anything special, so we're simply using the default queue, SciCell scoreboard queue standard, that's provided with the scoreboard. Then we can set the method that's used to compare the actual outputs with the expected outputs. And the SciCell scoreboard comes with predefined comparison policies in order, in order by producer, and out of order. So in order means all of the actual transactions have to arrive literally in the same order as the expected transactions. In order by producer means the transactions generated from each DUT output have to arrive in exactly the same order as the corresponding expected transactions, but the transactions from different producers can be interleaved however you like. And of course, out of order means exactly what it says. If you're comparing out of order transactions, then typically the comparison operation would need to be a little more complicated. So having done the factory overrides, we then create and set up the contents of the configuration object for the scoreboard. The configuration object is of a class SciCell scoreboard configuration, which has a number of methods for setting its attributes. So set queues sets the queue types for the scoreboard, two types in our example, DUT and REF. One of those is then selected as the primary queue, and the primary queue is used to drive the timing of the comparison. So whenever a transaction arrives on the DUT queue, it's going to be compared with the transaction from the REF queue. And then set producer is used to define each of the four producers, in our particular example for the scoreboard, where each producer has two corresponding queues, a transaction in the DUT queue and a transaction in the REF queue. Then we make the call to UVM config db set to set this configuration object for the scoreboard into the configuration database. So now I've shown you pretty much all of the significant code for this example. And of course, you can run this example for yourselves by taking advantage of the easy UVM code generator running on the EDA Playground website. So just type the URL shown here into your browser and you'll be able to hit run the code for yourselves. I've actually talked you through most of the interesting code in this example already. What I'm going to do now is to highlight the control files needed to run the EasyUVM code generator when you want to generate a reference model on the scoreboard.
So just a reminder, the top level env looks like this, where we've got multiple agents connected to the design under test. And when you set up the code generator settings, what you need to do is to identify each of the agents that are going to send transactions to the reference model and each of the agents that are generating the actual responses from the design under test. The inputs to the reference model are then identified using the setting ref model input. And the agents connected directly to the scoreboard are identified using the setting ref model output. Because these agents are not literally outputs from the reference model, but they're agents that generate transactions that are compared to the expected responses generated by the reference model. Here are the interesting settings in the common template file that you need to know about in order to generate instances of the reference model and the scoreboard. So the first setting, SciSL scoreboard source path, is the path to the source code of the SciSL scoreboard. Dulos doesn't distribute the SciSL scoreboard. You'll have to get the distribution for yourselves from the SciSL website. Then comes the settings for each of our reference model. In this particular example, we've only got a single reference model, but you can easily have multiple reference models by choosing a different tag for each of the reference models. So here, all of the settings have a single tag reference that indicates that all of the remaining settings in this file are settings for one and the same reference model. So we have four ref model input settings identifying the input agents, four settings identifying the output agents, then the ref model compare method setting that identifies the policy for comparing reference transactions with actual transactions in order by producer in this case. And then the two usual settings for the easier UVM code generator that allow us to include user defined code fragments inside the reference model. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. You can now go onto the EDA Playground website and play with this example for yourselves. At Doulos, we deliver training class worldwide on any of the subjects shown on this slide, including System Verilog and UVM. So if you'd like further details on any Doulos training classes, do visit our website, www.doulos.com.